Okay, so in this test we're going to be looking into alternative batteries for the Atomos Ninja Inferno. Because if you own one of these, then you may have already realised that the batteries that are supplied with it are just simply not good enough. And I can only personally get an average of 35 minutes per battery. And that's from a battery that's 5200 milliamps. Now, a lot of you may be thinking, why don't I just go and buy loads more MP batteries, as they range in price? But I wanted to make use of the DTAC cable that Atomos provided, meaning that I can power this beast with a high capacity VLOC battery. So I'll be testing out the IDX Duo 198 and the IDX 98. The purpose of this test is to work out one, how long these batteries last for within Ninja Inferno, which I'll be testing on different quality settings, which is 4K and 1080p, as high resolution will mean it will draw more power, and two, I'll be exploring which battery is right for you, depending on your shooting styles. Now I'm doing this test using my Panasonic GH5 and my Atomos Ninja Inferno. To make this as real as possible, I'll be doing this test outdoors, so weather is a factor which needs to be considered. And I'll be doing one set of tests which will solely be the Ninja Inferno and the GH5, and another test which will include the exact same setup but this time with a mic attached, drawing phantom power at 48 volts. Now the difference between the models is not a lot. As you can see the 198 is a lot bigger compared to the 98. Now they both have lithium ion batteries. The features of the 198 are it has 191 watt capacity, it has two DTAP connectors, one advanced and one standard, it has one 5 volt USB port, a torch and it weighs approximately 1070 grams. Now the features of the 98 are it has a 93 watt capacity which is basically half the 198, it has two DTAP connectors one advanced and one standard, it has one 5 volt USB port, a torch and it weighs approximately 676 grams. So as you can see facility wise they're pretty much equal. The 198 has a bigger battery capacity than the 98 but it comes with an extra cost and weight. However, there is one huge difference, is that the 98 you can take it on the plane, however the 198 you cannot, and this could be a huge deciding factor if you film internationally a lot. Now if you want to take your 98 on the plane, you would need to provide documentations, and the great thing that IDX have done here, is if you have a QR scan on your phone, you can just simply scan the barcode on the back and it will direct you to its website, which you can find the documentation for your battery. As for the rig I have, it isn't really designed to lock a V-mount battery, so I've had to get some additional parts, which if you're a GH5 shooter like me, or a better term to use a DSLR type of person, then you'll need to have some sort of additional components like me. So I got a V-mount adapter, which I attached to the cheese plate with 15mm rod attachments. The v light mount sat on the rods on my configuration. I then slotted the v light battery into the v light mount. So before I show you the test results, it's worth pointing out that this is being filmed in ProRes HQ, and the batteries are new, and each test was repeated three times. So we first filmed in 4K on the IDX98, and the battery lasted for an average of 2 hours and 52 minutes. We then connected up a phantom pad mic, and this time it lasted for an average of 2 hours and 48 minutes. We then changed batteries and connected the IDX198, and this time with just 4K, it lasted an average of 5 hours and 56 minutes. And we then attached a phantom pad mic, and it lasted an average of 5 hours and 50 minutes. We then dropped the quality to 1080p and repeated the test on the IDX98. With just 1080p, it lasted 3 hours and 7 minutes on average. And we then attached a phantom pad mic, and it lasted 3 hours and 2 minutes on average. We then switched to the 198, and in 1080p, on average, it lasted 6 hours and 6 minutes. We then connected up the phantom pad mic, and this time it lasted an average of 6 hours and 2 minutes. So just before I go into giving my feedback, um, I just want to explain something that I thought was an issue at first, but I got it cleared up by IDX. So when I was using my Inferno, my natural instinct is, every so often is to check the battery. Now. On the MP batteries you can run the voltage batteries quite fairly low before it dies, and initially my natural instinct is it would happen here, as when I connect it up it tells me there's 15.8 volts left in a fully charged up battery. But I noticed around 11 volts it would always cut out, and at first I thought was there a software issue from Atomos not displaying the correct readings from the batteries as it's only saying 11 volts, but it's just cutting out. But when I pressed the battery power button on the side to get an indication of the battery capacity left, it was not flashing, meaning 
it was fully discharged. Now, both batteries did this, which then, after some research, led me to the IDX website, where it states the end voltage is 11 volts, which basically means that the battery will cut off at 11 volts, as the battery is fully discharged. And if it started to go below this, then slowly the lifespan of the battery is slowly decreasing. And the key thing to remember is that with any battery that is left discharged, or as you could say to cut off, should be put on charge as soon as possible. Now I wanted to share this little experience that I had more for the people who may not have a lot of knowledge on batteries so they don't think they have a faulty battery. So what battery is better for you? Well for me it is the 98. Now as you can see the 198 basically lasts double of the time of the 98 and you may do the maths and for every 298 it costs more than one 198. But looking at it in a cost related way is irrelevant as these batteries are aimed at different types of shooters. First consider. Are you a national or international shooter? Because if you shoot internationally a lot, the 198 you're not allowed to take on board planes, but the 98 you can, with the right documentation. Say you're a national only shooter, it's worth looking into what kind of shooter you are. If you're a mobile shooter with a rig similar to mine, then I recommend the 98 due to the weight of the battery. On my GH5, I had two of my batteries used in the space 198 battery being fully discharged. But move my rig with the 198, I noticed the weight change on my tripod, which already has my lens, the GH5 body, a cage, and the Atomos Ninja Inferno itself all on it. And for where I had it positioned, it does block my screen a little. If you are using a big camera like the Sony F55, then I would recommend the 198. The time I would recommend the 198 with a rig like mine is if I was filming keynote speeches, because you're stationary and keynotes can last very long. That does not mean I would not want to own a 198, I just feel that it is aimed at more bigger compact cameras for higher end TV and film productions. Now on these batteries, the torch for me is a really neat feature. Now it's not a torch designed to help get you through the woods in total darkness, it's designed more for turning it on when it's dark so you can see how you're mounting your battery or looking through your kit bag getting something out. Regardless of what battery you get, remember the cutoff point is 11 volts. I would recommend you keep checking every so often on the battery capacity left as on the Ninja Inferno it does not flash when it is low, unlike it does when the MP batteries are connected. Press the button on the side as an indicator and change the batteries when one bar is left. Mm.